Hi there. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for spending a couple of minutes with me. I'm going to jumpstart you through the process of using the document API interface for AstroDB from Datastax. Uh, what's AstroDB, you might ask? Well, it's a multi-cloud database as a service built on Apache Cassandra. Uh, deploy, deploys to pretty much any cloud and it's fully auto-scaling, which is pretty awesome. So, um, most developers historically have worked with database software uh, and drivers uh, using binary protocols. So database technologies evolved a little bit today here, and what often people are starting to do, like Datastax AstroDB, um, is offer their database as a series of secure, always on uh, APIs for you, data access APIs. Uh, so you can use our traditional Cassandra query language, uh, you can use GraphQL, you can use REST, but today we're gonna focus on the document API. Uh, which is if you want to treat uh, Apache Cassandra running on, on Datastax AstroDB as a document database, you can just throw JSON at it and not define the schema up front. Um, you may not realize that Cassandra, uh, even though it's a quote-unquote no SQL database, uh, it's very similar to a relational database in the sense that you know the CQL API, GraphQL, and REST are schema first. You define the schema first, you define your queries, and then you work on, on connecting, you know, inserting data into that, and connecting it together with your application. Uh, document databases, however, a bit different, right? You can just throw JSON at it and not worry about defining any, anything up front. Uh, and instead of queries, you're typically doing full text search because it's either structured or semi, it's either unstructured or semi-structured data. So um, Astra is really easy to get started with. Uh, if you, you can sign up in a couple clicks with GitHub or, or Google. Uh, I already have an account, so I'm just gonna sign in. Um, and you get a very generous free tier. You'll notice right off the bat, uh, it just tells you what, what, what plan you're on. Uh, and it gives you an extraordinarily generous amount of, of uh, uh, read, write, operation, storage, and network uh, every month. Uh, when you exceed that, then you know it prompts you for a credit card and such. So um, anyway, let's just create our database. Uh, this is really easy. Um, we're just gonna call this um, uh, document API demo. Uh, and then a key space. What's a key space? It's kind of similar to a schema in relational world. In the relational world, uh, I'm going to call that JSON data. Um, sure. Let's pick cloud North America and do a U.S. West one. I'll just click create database. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it'll show up as pending for just a couple minutes uh, until the cloud uh, hamsters are done spinning the infrastructure wheel uh, and have created all the relevant infrastructure for you automatically. Sweet, so this shows up as active. We are good to go. You can either click the connect tab here or you can just drill in uh, to the dashboard and come to the connect tab here as you wish. There's also an embedded uh, CQL console um, which connects you right away to a, a shell uh, that you can start doing, you can start working with, but you know, we don't need to do that because we're gonna be, uh, you're gonna skip learning CQL and just work with the document API. Alternatively, you can also use this load data feature over here, which allows you to drop in uh, CSV files of under 40 megabytes. So that's also a, 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 good, uh, a good option. Um, the a document API is really easy to use. Um, all you need is just uh, for authentication, for programmatic authentication, you, you need an application token. Uh, it'll prompt you to create one, but um, you know, if, you, if for whatever reason you, know, you, just, you, haven't, you, you just haven't used one yet, uh, come here into token management. And you can select a role like database administrator, which is usually what we do for demos because that's sort of your super user. Um, you know, for when you come to production use cases, you can scope things down to a minimal set of permissions that you need. Uh, and you can also create your own uh, roles. Uh, there's a link here for, for more data. Um, one thing though, uh, make sure you save off all the token information into a local file uh, because it will only display once. Uh, and you know, once that's gone, that's it. Um, however, not the end of the world, you can just delete the token and, and make another. So uh, let's come back here and, and get started with the document API. Uh, right, I should have gone back to the database itself. Okay, cool, so you come to connect. And then uh, here in you know, REST, uh, document, GraphQL, all, these, all this information here is dynamically uh, generated and specific now to your cloud instance. Like this is your cloud instance ID, for example. You know, if you're using a command line, you know, shell script, or maybe even an IDE, you, know, you could set these values uh, replace this, you know, app token with the, the token you downloaded uh, and you're off to the races. Um, I'm going to use the built-in Swagger um, user interface, which is just kind of like a, it's kind of like Postman in the sense that it's a sort of a, a REST client, uh, almost like a testing harness. Um, and here in the documents area, I have a variety, you know, here's the list of all the, some of the different document APIs that I can work with. Um, so all we need to do to get started is to create 
a new empty collection in a namespace. When we say namespace, we mean key space. That's just the document API terminology for it. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. Uh, all we'll do is uh, we'll grab our token uh, that we downloaded a minute ago. Oh, we got to click try it out here. So it's editable. Paste in your token. Uh, and then let's give the namespace an ID. So I'm going to call this um, JSON. Um, JSON, JSON data, uh, and then um, let's give the collection a name, and that also is a JSON expression itself. Uh, so we'll just say you know name, and it is expecting that particular value, uh, and then whatever you want to choose here as your as your JSON collection name. I'm going to get rid of these auto generated curly braces, uh, and then I'm good to go. Uh, if you just click the execute button, uh, it gives you this little happy loading uh, script that your your syntax is well formed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It auto, it auto sort of generates the curl command for you, which is really helpful uh, if you're a, um, you know, a shell scripter uh, or you just like doing this from the command line, uh, you know, it just basically writes the equivalent curl command for you so you can use that. Um, and then great, hey, you know, it gives me my uh, 201 response and um, ignore everything below here where it says responses. This is a swagger thing where these are sort of potential responses. The one you're interested in is the one that says server response here. That's That's the... Uh, that's its response to your, your the command that you clicked, you know, execute here on. So now I have a collection uh, called JSON collection, and I can get started. So I can throw a JSON document at it right away, right? So again, uh, I'll use the the post API here uh, to do exactly that. Just click try it out. Um, now, what's the namespace ID? It's JSON data, uh, and then the collection ID was JSON collection. Great. And now um, let's just grab one record. Um, I, uh, I went and got um, a data set from, from Amazon called uh, Musical Instruments. I think it's just a bunch of music instrument reviews um, from, um, uh, from the Amazon you know, commerce site. Uh, and you know, I didn't make a lot of edits to it. Uh, basically all I did was um, uh, make turn it into a JSON array. So I'm just gonna grab one um, document and start with that. Let's come back to our Swagger user interface and uh, I'm going to paste that in here. Um, great. And I'm going to get rid of the comma because I'm not doing an array and then this auto generated sort of curly braces right here. Uh, click execute and boom, there's my document ID. Obviously, you're going to want to save that in a local variable or something like that, um, you know, as so you can continue to work with it. Um, uh, but, you know, yeah. There's my, there's my JSON document ID. So it's literally that simple. You know, let's say I had a, a bunch of data I wanted to work with. Um, I could uh, write a, a bunch of requirement uh, documents in, in one request if I wanted. Uh, if I come back here um, this uh, to this file, like I said, all I did really was the only difference between this file and what I downloaded was I added this open, opening square bracket. Um, I put a separating comma uh, in between each um, JSON record, uh, and then at the very end, um, you know, the very last one does not have a, a comma at the end, seeing as it's the penultimate um, record, and then a closing uh, square bracket. So I can take those hundred or you know hundred odd records um, and come down here to my you know write multiple documents in one request. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to start from the bottom to the top here since I already cu uh, cut and pasted that bit. I'm um, just going to scroll back up. Whoops, a little too far. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. I'm going to get rid of that opening curly brace that was auto-generated. Uh, cool. And now uh, let's go get our uh, information about our uh, to fill in the rest of this. So let's get our um, Cassandra token. Uh, and then we know the namespace ID was JSON data. And then the, the name of the collection was JSON collection that we created. All done. That's it. If I um, wanted a, a um, and I, you know, it'll, it'll assign a random, random UUID, or I could give it a path uh, to, you know, maybe use the reviewer ID here if I wanted. You know, if there's some data inside the, the JSON as, as itself that I wanted to use as an ID for the document, I, I could feed it that. Uh, but yeah, I'm good letting it with it uh, g randomly generated. So click execute. Great. It's going to generate a massive curl statement for me. So I'm going to skip to the bottom of that. And then lovely, there's my response body. There's all my document IDs, letting me know that um, Astro Database has, um, uh, has you know, processed all these and we're, we're good to go. Um, so what I'm, I'm just gonna do is, is save those off onto a local file here and then 
I don't know, let's say let's query for one of them just to make sure everything's kind of, you know, everything's looking good. So I'll grab this top one here. There's my document ID. Okay, great. So let's do a query. Let's go back to the top of this. And let's say, uh, yeah, get a document. Great. Okay, cool. Let's click try it out. And uh, let's see, I'm going to start from the bottom and, you know, and paste in my document ID. Um, cause that's the one I want. And then again, uh, you're just adding the, the, the same things as before your, um, I'm going to put in that, that security token, the namespace ID being JSON data, the collection ID being JSON collection. Uh, and there's my document ID. Now I could also add things like a, a where clause and I could use all kinds of filters, uh, Boolean operators, uh, hints, that sorts of thing. Um, you know, I could restrict it to certain fields, do some pagination, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm going to just keep it simple for the demo, the demo purpose for now. And boom, hey, there's my JSON document coming back. So uh, you've got a um, multi-cloud, serverless, highly scalable database uh, that is, you know, deployable in, in multiple cloud regions. Um, you know, just by throwing JSON at it, uh, you know, now I've done it here via this, this uh, console. Um, you can certainly do it. Uh, using the AstroJS Collections API. That's what most folks do. Uh, you can go grab that from NPM right here uh, and basically do the same thing that I just did in the user interface in code. Well, listen, hey, thanks for spending a couple of minutes with me today. And um, let us know how what you end up making uh, with AstroDB. You can find us on Twitter uh, for Datastax Devs, um, or you can find us on, on LinkedIn at the same. Uh, looking forward to, yeah, hearing what you build uh, with it and look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye-bye.